really looking forward to most of this next hour. Uh, Joe C., me, O'Brien, Matty Hayes, uh, and we've got our guy, Patrick Young, who is in studio with us. And it's just nice to see your face, bro. Nice to see the smile. Yeah. You doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing fantastic. It's good to be here. Yeah, I'm glad to have you in. And I want to start off with people who aren't familiar uh, with what happened to you. You need to tell your story just a little bit as far as what happened uh, and, and why we see you in a wheelchair right now. Tell us tell us why. Yeah, so I was in Nebraska. Uh, this would be our wedding date. My wife and I, my wife at the time, fiance, we were planning to get married on July 9th in Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, I was just staying up there with the family uh, for the time being. And I didn't have much. I was working, uh, but I had some free time on my hands. Just wanted to do something else with that free time. And I started working for an irrigation company on the side. And I really enjoyed it. I I like to call it, um, it's it's like putting adult Legos together in a sense, but it has a great purpose. Uh, Something that is some hard manual labor. uh, But when those things are put together, the pivots, they water these farmers their land and that food ends up going out and feeding you know thousands of people so that was the way I kind of looked at and I really enjoyed uh being a part of that just for it was just doing it for the time being until we got married then we'd move down here to Jacksonville and get back to the usual Mm -hmm. of working for Tim Tebow's company and the SEC network and anything else that I had going on uh but it was on on July 29th it was about uh I hadn't worked there more than 10 days uh just on the side and uh, I was coming back off of this dirt road. My buddy that I was working with, he was behind me in a separate truck. His truck got stuck in, in the dirt road because he was in a really big truck, some really soft sand on that dirt road. So he had to, he wasn't going fast enough, got stuck. And I was just cruising on my way, heading up to the farm site we were just at, mm-hmm. uh, where we were transporting pieces of this pivot to another another part of the farm, putting it back together. Uh, I was going about 30, 35 miles per hour and uh, didn't see, ha- there was no way of knowing unless you were very familiar with the road that the stop sign was coming up right after this slope. And right after, and right when I went over this, this little slope, immediately I was like, holy crap, I'm in for something. Cause it was not enough time to hit the brakes and stop and get out of the way. Uh, so I tried to turn my vehicle just and that. My thought was get out of the way. There could be oncoming traffic. I don't want to hit them. They won't want to hit me. They won't see me coming. So my car goes completely parallel uh, to the to the interstate road and flips over one time. Uh, flipped over. I'm um, thank God it was only one time because multiple times my, my injury would have been more severe. But I didn't hit my head. I didn't hurt my neck. But immediately when the when the truck came back on all fours, all that force and the position that my body was in, especially with my height, caused my my T7 and T8 to fracture. Uh, me, I immediately couldn't didn't have feeling in my legs. Knew something was something was wrong and. Uh, the the point in the story that's actually the most like thank what I'm so thankful for was I was able to grab my phone because my buddy when I was when I called him and he he came up to to the crash site before he came up to the crash site he's like where are you yeah he said from from the road you could not see my car wow. so if I wasn't able to grab my phone and contact him he would have just driven up to where we just were and I don't know where what he would have thought but I could have been stuck down there for hours. Uh, I was life flighted to South Dakota, uh, a Vera McKinnon hospital where I had to get my T5 through, through 11 fused, two rods, uh, 12 screws. And once I was out of there for about two weeks, I went over to Denver to Craig Hospital, great place. And I was there for uh, a little bit over a month. And then I got back to Jacksonville here on the 19th. It's incredible. And to have to endure that and then have to embrace what is next in your chapter this is where you got me going you fired me up a little bit because you've taken this head on Patrick yeah and and uh there's been so many things revealed to me uh, I wouldn't say philosophically Mm -hmm. but just through experience in life I truly believe the seeds that you plant in your life daily positive or negative that plant is going to blossom when you face a crisis and I'm not giving myself the credit. You know, I give my credit to my mother, to my father, uh, to my faith, just having a positive outlook on life, regardless of the cir- current circumstances, always thinking that, OK, how can I get better from this type thing? You know, when I when you face a crisis, the way that you've been handling things before is going to be magnified. 
And I did, of course I had moments. Like it's, it's, it's really hard sometimes to be like, you know, I physically can't do certain things that I've always dreamed of doing. I didn't get a chance to dance with my wife. Didn't get a chance to have a the, the wedding that we prepared for. And among other things that, that come along with being married, mm-hmm. uh, that, that, I mean, just, you know, with my daughter when she loves sports. But the thing is, there's such an, an opportunity for me uh, to take this platform and to realize, hey, the way I'm looking at it is that God entrusted me with this platform because he knew I was going to be able to use it to inspire I don't know how many people, it doesn't matter, whoever is touched by this. But when I look at it in that lens and light, uh, because guess what? This doesn't affect the way that I can be a husband or a father or a friend to whomever it may be. Um, It doesn't affect at all. Yes, I'm limited on on things physically, but every part that makes me who I am is still right here. And I'm going to use, and I'm not going to waste this pain. I'm not, you know, when I, in the Chris Harry article, Chris Harry did a fantastic job and I said, I'm going to define what this chapter in my life means. And that's what I'm doing right now in this moment with you. Patrick, do you, do you know Inky Johnson, former Tennessee football player? I don't know him personally, but I, I have admired him from afar for a long time. Yeah, he, he's he's he, fantastic. He lost his arm mm-hmm. and he, he basically did exactly what you're trying to do right now. Yeah. He's, he's now a motivational speaker that goes around the, the country and gets paid to tell his story and to explain his life and to explain just what you're explaining. Yeah. That sometimes stuff like this can be a gift. And here's how it can be a gift. Yeah. Well, Inky, Inky was actually just with the Gators before that Utah game. So right, let's right. you know let's give him some credit for how how our boys <laughs> fought back and got that done. But his story is incredible. Like he he had so many things working out for him prior to his injury that all he had to, really had to do was complete that season. He would have been first second round pick. And he speaks now that saying that if that wouldn't have happened. He wouldn't have the faith in God that he does now. He wouldn't have seen his his father come to faith. Uh, the, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people that he has impacted with his story, with his fight, with his his just positivity and the way that. And I love this just how he puts pressure. Like a person like like Inky Johnson that has gone through a trial like that has so much credibility because he's achieved success by going through with a right. fire. So it's like when he that Kobe mindset, like I don't speak lazy, I don't I don't understand like when you're talking about that you don't want to work hard, you don't want to push yourself because I I just operate differently, and that's that's who Inky Johnson is and has become. What has been whether it's I know you obviously Patrick had a conversation with uh, Ryan Shazier, or whether it's connections with guys like an Inky Johnson. What has been the most surprising thing, good or bad, to come out of this for you that maybe has changed your perception of life? Uh, oh, that's a great question. The most surprising thing um, that has come, there's been so many awesome things that have come out of this, this, uh, and I can say I'm not surprised, just the way that my mother has just shown up. Uh, she spent so much time with me out there in Denver. My father, he came up there as well, and we went through some psychology sessions together and just getting to learn more about him. The way my wife has stepped up in our early in our marriage, just fulfilling things that I have not been able to do. Um, just the love and support that I've gotten from so many people. It, it has just inspired me to be a conduit. It almost as feels as though I have a duty to, to God, to these people that just love and support me that are praying for me to use this platform and not waste it. Um, I can't say what has been the most surprising yet because it's still so early in this journey um, that I'm in. But what is really cool along this way is uh, just my body is healing. My body is continually, I'm continually getting sensate. And not that I'm surprised. I, I, I live by faith. I live to expect these things, but you don't know how long it's going to take for it to come back. Uh, but just yesterday, you know, my sister is a phys- she's a doctor. She's, a, she's got her doctorate in physical therapy. Uh, she was working on me and I told her, Hey sis, fill my hips. Cause I was, I was using these, uh, a stem machine on my quads and it was getting my muscles to come out. I turned the stem machine off because it, I felt some sensation around my hip flexors. And I've said, Hey sis, I'm going to try as hard as I can to see, see if my hip flexors are activating and both sides of my hip flexors, the, the muscle that if you were to do, if you were just to stand straight up and lift your, your knee up into a, a leg up to a 90 degree angle, you're activating that hip flexion muscle. And that's something I could not do months ago, weeks ago. Um, so it just goes to show piece by piece, things are continuing to come. Wow. And I just love 
those small things that are happening to say, hey, continue along this path that you're on. Uh, continue to live by faith. Continue to just control what you can control. That's it. And then everything else will take care of itself. I told myself that no matter what happens in this time, I'm going to leave no stone, stone unturned and no regret that I'm going to give it all I got because I'm not going to live with the life of regret knowing that there was more I, I could have left on the table. Oh, so man, you're uh, you're already an inspiration as an individual, and now we go beyond that, and we're going to talk a little bit coming up here in just a second about what your new pursuit is because you, as you said, you're going to try and touch and help as many people as possible. We've got Patrick Young with us. We know we have a lot of Gators. We know we have a lot of people that love Jacksonville just like you do. You can hit the text line designed by Lifetime and Closures at 641-1010 if you've got a question for Patrick Young who's hanging out with us in the 2 o'clock hour.